Similarly, moving on, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, and P8 appear on your screen. Okay. Now moving on. Now, uh, very one, one very important uh, point that I forget uh, forgot to m mention here is, uh, in the last part, I divided the circle into twelve parts. That is why I divided the uh, the directing li the cent line which is passing through the center and parallel to the directing li uh, line into twelve parts. Now, if you look at the screen in this question, I divided the circle into eight parts. That is why I took eight centers because I have eight positions on the circle, so I will have coinc uh, coinciding eight points on the centers as well. So C1 will be coinc uh, coinciding with one and that hence we have only eight points, not 12 points. If you are dividing the circle into 12 points and taking eight points on the center line, then that will be wrong. So the number of points or the number of parts you divide the circle in, you have to take as many number of uh, points on the line which is passing through the center. Moving on to the next point, uh, now we have to join all the points to get our required superior cycloid as we did in the previous problem. So this curve which is uh, shown to you in uh, purple is the required cycloid. Now making the tangent remains the same, we will take a point Q, from point Q we will mark point Q1, from here we will mark point Q2, same as the previous problem and this is the perpendicular that is there to the curve and this is the tangent that appears. I hope you all know how to draw a perpendicular to a line. So we are not discussing that method right now. Moving on to an inferior cycloid. This is the point which is inside the rolling circle. I think by now the concept would have been very clear. So we'll just move on uh, quickly to this problem. So this is the, uh, I'll just play it for your understanding again. Now, as you can see the cycloid, the point intersected the line and did not cross it for a superior cycloid the curve sorry uh, in a cycloid the curve just intersected the uh, directing line for a superior cycloid it intersected and crossed across the green line and in a sim uh, this cycloid which is inferior cycloid the curve will never touch the directing line so, moving on the same procedure as a simple cycloid and superior cycloid the only distance will be uh, only difference will be that the point will be inside the circle rather than on the rolling circle or outside it so let's begin with a simple cycloid taking uh, taking a point which is xmm inside the rolling circle and let's we as we always do let's begin by taking a point c and uh, with a diameter d we'll be drawing a circle as it appears on your screen the next is we are going to draw a tangential directing line which is which will pass to the base of the circle and a line which will be parallel directing to the center uh, a directing line uh, a line which is passing to the center and it is parallel to the directing line and then we'll divide the circle as well as the line to uh, sorry first we are going to divide the lines into eight parts and we are going to get the different centers that is c c1 c2 c3 and etc the animated thing is going to appear on your screen yes c1 c2 c3 c4 and i'll just uh, quickly make it appear for you yeah let's move on to the next step draw a circle which is with the center c and the diameter or the radius will be equal to d minus x here d is the radius of the circle not the diameter d minus x will be the radius of the circle and then divide the circle into eight equal parts or 12 equal parts or si 16 equal parts that depends on your judgment now, as you can see, the circle is formed inside uh, this uh, directing circle. Oh, sorry, the uh, generating circle. And uh, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, 7, and 8, the points which are appearing on your screen. Next, we are going to draw parallel lines through all these points as we did previously. I'll just make it appear on your screen. Okay. The next point, we are going to take the radius equal to CP0 and center as c1 and cut an arc on line which is passing through one and repeat the same procedure for all the points and uh, okay so these are the points that will be received i've just quickly made them appear not uh, i've not let it animated because it will take time and we are short on time this time so a curve which is going to pass through all these points will be the uh, required inf inferior cycloid Moving on, we, are, we have to make a tangent, the method remains the same. We are going to mark a point Q, take a point Q, then mark point Q1 and uh, we are going to draw a 
drop a perpendicular from q1 to q2 and then a uh, tangent is drawn uh, from q1 q to q uh, sorry q to q2 we are going to join and we are going to have the perpendicular and then we are going to make a perpendicular to the perpendicular to get the tangent okay now we are going to uh, move on to the apicycloid the point here is on the rolling circle which is rotating outside a directing circle so here we have two circle instead of straight straight line and a circle we have two circles here one is a smaller circle which will be the directing circle and one is a bigger circle so this circle is going to rotate on the smaller circle and a point on the smaller circle will be generating the curve which is required in this as well there are uh, inferior and superior uh, epicycloid uh, that can be uh, obtained by taking the point inside or outside the circle as you can see on your screen we have a continuous animation here which shows that uh, this is an epicycloid which is being shown the point c green is the directing circle uh, blue is the uh, generating circle and there is a point on the circle which is uh, you know just creating this curve red curve which is being appeared on the screen and as you can see that uh, the, the, uh, the black it is the line is black and then once the point passes through it so it becomes red so it is trying to just explain you that how these uh, particular uh, curve is being traced by the point now moving on let us assume that the diameter of the rolling circle is x and the diameter of the directing circle is y and using that uh, figure we will what we will be doing is a rolling circle will travel a distance of x pi x on the directing circle y pi x because that is a circumference uh, hence the arc will be decided uh, the arc will decide the length and that will be equal to x by y into 3600 x by y that is the radius what is x x is the uh, diameter of the rolling circle and uh, uh, d is uh, sorry y is the diameter of the directing circle so here the rolling circle the point on the rolling circle will uh, sorry the rolling circle will be moving pi x which is the dime uh, the circumference of the directing circle hence we are going to take the length as uh, arc length as x by y into three six double zero now moving on with taking an o we have to mass take a center o and then uh, radius equal to y we first draw the directing circle we first draw the directing circle we are taking a point o and then we are going to take a radius y and then we are going to draw the basic arc length of that circle yeah so this is uh, this angle is obtained here this is the angle which is obtained that x by y into 3600 and we have then what we did is we take we took a center o and with the same sorry I'll just make it appear again. Okay, let's see. This point O is taken. Now the radius is taken as y, and then what we did is we draw a, a straight line, random straight line, and from that straight line we'll take a uh, angle the, the, which is obtained by x by y upon uh, into 360, and then draw a line. So what we are going to do is we are going to trace the curve between this point and this point. So then what next what will happen is that point P is the base of the uh, generating circle and from P to C we are going to cut an arc of the radius and then take C as center and draw the uh, generating circle. So this black line depicts the uh, gen uh, sorry directing circle and this green line depicts the genera uh, generating circle. So let's move on to the next uh, next slide and see what is the next step now we are going to divide the rolling circle into 12 parts uh, sorry 8 parts and uh, then name them as 1 to 8 and with OS center and arc passing through line C we are going to uh, divide the arc into 8 parts what see we are going to take we are first dividing the generating circle into 8 parts and the next point that we will do is we will okay okay first we are dividing the generating circle into 8 parts then with radius equal to uh, generating the uh, radius of the generating circle as well as the uh, radius of the uh, directing circle we are going to cut an arc as you can see in the point as in red and then divide this arc into eight parts now we'll ask that how we are going to divide the arc into eight parts it is like this angle divided by eight will be these uh, this distance and through that you just cut one arc and then successive arcs can be cut till c8 to get all these points Moving on with the radius equal to O1, O1 and O, 
as center draw an arc parallel to the directing line uh, say the directing circle and with the, those points will marked as two so as you remember in the previous uh, when we are constructing a cycloid what we did was that uh, from the generating circle we drew a line which was straight line which was passing through all the points now here uh, the generate uh, sorry no uh, the directing curve is not a straight line it is a it is a radius so what we need to do is we need to find a, a, a curve which is parallel to this curve so what we are basically doing is from 0 uh, sorry o to p we have the directing circle from o to 1 we will be having the first line from o to 2 we will be having the second line from o to 3 we will be having the third line from o to 4 we will be having the fourth line and from o to c the center of the circle we had already drawn so all these green lines depicts the path of the points the or say uh, the points the probable points on which one and this line depicts probable points of one and seven from where they can pass and similarly the other points uh, are these are the basic the probab this is the basic probability area from where we are going to get the points so the next step we are with radius equal to cp and center equal to c1 let's cut an arc which is passing through line one and then repeat to uh, the repeat the same procedure so here see the in the figure again what we are doing is we are taking the radius as c to p0 and cutting an arc from c to line which is passing through one the same thing as we did previously so this is what has happened from c the center as c1 we have cut an arc on p1 with center as c2 we are cutting an arc which is passing on a curve which is passing to through 2 and the radius is again equal to c to p0 and uh, as you can see from c2 to p2 then the same thing will appear as p3 which is from c3 the same p4 p5 p6 p7 and finally the p8 will appear okay the p8 will appear so this is the uh, point these are the points that we have obtained the these are the locations of points as the circle keeps on moving the next point is let us join all these points to get the required epicycloid try to make the curve as smooth as possible because the more the smooth the uh, curve you get the more marks the examiner or the uh, paper checker is bound to give you moving on uh, the next uh, point that we have as you can see on the slide that we are going to construct an hypocycloid now for an hypocycloid the ro uh, the point is on the rolling circle which is rotating inside the directing circle now uh, as i mentioned uh, for uh, superiors we can have a superior epicycloid and an inferior epicycloid similarly we can have an uh, superior and inferior hypocycloid as well now you we can see in this is the generating circle in blue and there is a point which is the generator and green one is the is a directing circle and uh, the red the curve that is being traced by the movement of this point is the generated hypocycloid so let us assume the diameter of the rolling circle as y and diameter of the directing circle as y as same as we did in the previous problem rolling circle will travel a distance of pi x again that is also same and hence the arc length again angle will be given by x by y into 3600 now step one is marking point o and then taking the radius as we previously as we did we have taken point o now again we will take the radius uh, we will take a random line and this is the angle that has been generated the next is we are uh, with radius this is the radius which is being taken and a line uh, sorry a curve is traced or the the circle that is this is the generating circle uh, sorry directing circle and this is the generating circle okay so c to p is the radius of the generating circle and o to p is the dime uh, sorry the radius of the directing circle now the next step uh, we'll be dividing the rolling circle in 12 parts 12 parts uh, first we have taken a line uh, which is passing through the center uh, after dividing the rolling circle into 12 parts and then again the angle which is di uh, angle divided by 8 we will have the centers of the different centers which are the locations as this as this uh, rotating circle or say the generating circle moves on the directing circle next point let us uh, see now we are going to draw lines i'll just okay now we are going to uh, take the radius equal to o to 4 and then draw a line o to 3 and draw a line o to 2 and draw a line o to 1 and draw a line not the line 
curves basically and these all curves are parallel to the directing circle moving on with radius equal to cp and the center sc1 this procedure remains the same with radius equal to c to p and center is equal to c1 we are going to cut an arc on uh, as you can see on p1 the next point is oh so, okay i'm sorry okay one by one all the arcs will appear this is uh, one p1 now p2 will appear all these are from c2 to p2 c3 to p3 on the line which is passing through th on the curve which is passing through three from c4 to p4 from c5 to c5 so all these kind of uh, points are obtained by us okay so from p to p8 are the red points which are uh, uh, visible on your screen are the points or the probable points from where the points are, uh, the generating circle is going to pass so the curve which is passing through all these points will be the required hypocycloid now this is just one part of the hypocycloid that has been drawn and you can you continue to draw the others as well the arc length and the angle can also be mentioned in the question the diameters will be given in the question so depending on the data that has been given in the question we can draw the uh, construct the curve using the uh, method that has been discussed here now it go on to the construction of involute now for a construction of involute this is uh, basically an involute as you can see a curve which is traced by say for example we have a th thread now um, look, we go to we fly kites and when our kite is uh, you know cut by somebody else we just uh, rotate the string back so as you can see that this is the cross-sectional area and this is a string and the end point of the string is the point is the point which will trace the locus and uh, once it keeps on rotating it its distance to the circle keeps on decreasing it can be uh, either way as well where uh, we are unwounding the string so this uh, point is going away from the circle so this is basically an involute now let us draw the involute uh, of the of a circle and a string which is equal to the circumference of the circle for for that we have to take a center c and the diameter d the, which will be given to us now we are taking a circle and we are taking the the string which is wrapped we are only taking the string which is equal to the diameter of the circle okay now step two uh, from point p we are going to draw horizontal lines and length will be equal to